All right, welcome to solving uh, systems of equations using matrices. So we've got a couple different tools for solving uh, um, a set of, of equations. If we have two linear, linear equations, uh, we can either graph them and try to come up with an answer where those two lines cross. We can uh, substitute one for the other. If I had these two lines, I could say um, x equals 6 minus y, and then stick y, um, 6 minus y in for this y and solve that equation. I also can use elimination. I could multiply this whole bottom row by a negative 2 to give me negative 2x minus 2y equals negative 12 and subtract the two or add those two together then to cancel out my y's see what x equals and then come back and solve it for y so there's there's um, a few different ways that we can solve these linear equations there's one more way using a matrix so we took these numbers uh, negative 3x plus 2y equals 2 and x plus y equals 6 and put them into a matrix here's our negative 3 our 2 our 2 um, x just is 1x, 1y, and then equals 6. So this is our matrix that we're going to use. Um, we are going to try to get this identity matrix. So right down here, uh, the 1, 0, 0, 1 is going to, if we can get the first two to have this 1, 0, 0, 1, then our last two numbers are going to be the answer. It's going to be our x and our y. So um, that's because here this is x and y is 0, so what's x equal? And here if y is, or x is 0 and y is 1, then what does y equal? So that's why this identity matrix would give us the answer. But how do we get there is uh, another challenge. So we have a couple rules. Um, the one rule is we can interchange any two rows, so we can flip them which we're going to do, we can automatically see 1, 0, 0, 1. Hey, if we can get this 1 up on top, we're going to be one more step closer. So we can flip the rows if we need to. The other thing that we can do is we actually have to do both of these at the same time. Multiply all the elements in the row by a non-zero constant, and then replace the row with the sum of that row and the multiple of the other row. So we'll see how that works in just a second. We're going to add it to the other line. All right. That's harder to explain than it is just to do. So here's our equation. Like we said first, um, we are going to start by simply, simply, and yet I can't do it. We're going to highlight the whole thing, make a copy, and paste it. So now I've got that same equation, um, except I'm going to take my second row, and I'm going to put it first. And now I've got uh, the same matrix, negative 3, 2, 2, and it's down at the bottom. Here's the one at the top. So I've got this one, and I've got uh, um, this I'm going to leave to last. It turns out that that's um, kind of a helpful thing. Next thing we want to do is get uh, this to be a 0. So i got 1, 0, 0, 1. I want this to be a 0. So going back to our rules, I can multiply all the elements in a row by a non-zero -con, non constant. I can multiply it by something other than zero. If I multiply it by zero, everything turns zero, and you're out of luck. But if I can multiply it by something else, that's pretty helpful. If I can multiply this whole row by a three, then I notice that my negative three and my three would cancel out. So that may not make sense right now, but hold on just for a second. Let's try it. So I've got 1, and I'm going to multiply this 1 by 3. So if I multiply 1 by 3, I get a 3. My next line, I'm going to multiply this 1 by 1, and I get a 3. And then I'm going to multiply this 6 by 3, and I'm going to get an 18. So now, I have put those two together. I multiply this row by 3. I'm going to add that to this row, and I can replace that second row. So that's the rule down here. So um, I put those numbers off to the side just so you can see what we're doing. Um, 
I'm going to make a copy of, of this one. This is exactly the same, except now that I've multiplied this row by 3, I'm going to add it to the second row. So I've got 3 plus negative 3 is going to give me 0. I've got a 3 plus a 2. That's going to give me a 5. And I've got 2 plus a 18. That's going to give me 20. So again, I multiplied this row by a number. I did 3, and then I added it to the second one. Now I've got a 0 in this row. Now you may say, why is that work? Well, because it's one of my rules. Uh, people have studied it, and that's just how it happens. So um, we're going to use those rules to be helpful. Well, we're going to use them again because right now I want to get this whole row equal to, uh, or um, just this one equal to uh, 1. So if I can get that one equal to 1, then I'm happy. And back up here, if I look at my rules, one of them is I can multiply all the elements in a row by a non-zero constant. I'm just going to do this one first. So I've got 0, and I want this one to end up being a 1. How do I get 5 to turn into a 1? I have to multiply it by 1 fifth. I use my reciprocal. So 0 times 1 fifth, I'll just put that off to the side. I'm multiplying that whole second row by 1 fifth right here. So 1 fifth times 0 is going to leave me with 0. I'll make a copy of this and put it down here again so we can see it. So 1 fifth times 0 is 0. I'm going to multiply this by a negative or a 1 fifth and that'll turn into a 1. And I'm going to multiply 20 by 1 fifth. So that's kind of like a divided by 5. And, oh, it didn't look perfect, but 20 divided by 1 fifth, or 20 divided by 5, multiplied by 1 fifth, either way I get 4. So now I am 3 quarters of the way there. I have uh, my 1, 0, 1, but this is a 1. So I've got 1, 0, 1. I just need a 0 here, and then I've got my answer. So then my question is, how do I get a 0 up here? Well, I can multiply this row by something and then add it to this one. So I need to multiply this by something to get rid of that. They're so close, all I need to do is multiply it by a negative 1. So if I multiply that whole row by a negative 1, I'll have 0 times a negative 1 is still going to be 0. I've got 1 times a negative 1 will give me a negative 1. And then I've got 4 times a negative 1 will give me a negative 4. Now if I add this to this row, now the cool thing is you see that's a 0? They're going to add together real nicely and I'll still get my um, 1 in the first corner. So I'm going to highlight this again, wait, make one more copy, and now I'm going to add this to my first row. So 0 plus 1 ends up with 1. I've got negative 1 plus 1 is going to end up with 0. There's my 0. And uh, 6 plus negative 4, that's going to leave me with 2. So how do I read this? Here's my identity, 1, 0, 1, 0. Uh, that's my identity. So my answer is 2, 4. Because this is my x, so x should be 2. My y right here should be 4. If I move that away, I've got my answer here uh, to start off with. I was just waiting to see if we could come up with that right answer. Sure enough, we got 2 and 4, 2 and 4. Um, that's a bunch of bizarre work. Does it actually make sense? Does it, does it give us the right answer? Well, if we stick a 2 in here, I've got negative 3 times 2 would be a negative 6. Plus 2 times y, 2 times 4 would be 8. So negative 6 plus 8 would give me 2. That is correct. I've got x plus y equals 6, 2 plus 4 equals 6, so I can always check my answers to get it. You may have said, you know what, I'd rather graph it. 
graphing is a valid way to solve an equation substitution if I'd solve one of these for X or Y I could um, do that to get my answer of 2 4 I could use my elimination by multiplying this whole row by maybe 3 and get 3x 3y and 18 and then cancel out my x's to find y and then substitute it back in so I've got different ways that I can solve these linear equations and this is just one more tool in your tool belt